this method of production sources over half of the seafood eaten worldwide. Aquaculture, in simple words, is the farming of fish, crustaceans, and aquatic plants, along with multiple other sources of food too, in turn, produce while replenishing wild stock and repeatedly rebuilding populations of threatened and endangered species, and dated back to almost three to 4,000 years ago. This is a very sustainable and environmentally responsible source of food and produce, and surprisingly enough, the number of farmed fish is currently exceeding the amount of farmed livestock. What are the different facades of aquaculture? What are the different technologies being used in its processes? Who are its pioneers? The answers to all of the mentioned questions will be duly answered now. Although in recent times, there hasn't been a significant development in the field of aquaculture, the Blue Revolution has resulted in a somewhat massive increase in aquaculture practices, especially fish farming throughout the world. The primary source of produce raised in agriculture are fishes, which are grown in specially purposed tanks, fish ponds, and ocean enclosures. This practice has surely made it possible to slow down the process of disappearance of aquatic species, although not completely nip it in the butt. With new and upcoming technologies, the disappearance of rare marine life can be completely stopped. The majority of fish farming areas or sea farms allow the growth of almost all types of seafood, which additionally require fish, shellfish, and other organisms to provide food for the aquatic animals being reared for consumption. Aquaculture has its own set of issues in terms of harm to the environment, which has long been recognized in terms of its impact on sustainable living methods. This adverse impact has been seen particularly in the poor nations, which currently practice agriculture using pollution-inducing methods, which create pollution from harmful chemicals and pesticides. A prime example of this is agriculture in Malaysia, which has resulted in the widespread devastation of the mangroves, which in particular are critical habitats for biodiversity. To prevent this, the advancement in technology is critical for overcoming some of agriculture's problems. Even though any country with the proper access to the sea can completely solve its seafood shortage problems, this method of food production poses multiple issues in terms of damage to the environment. Furthermore, this will help to feed the entire planet, albeit at the cost of the potential destruction of the sustainable development facade. Another issue under the facade of fish farming is the fact that different countries around the world have various fishing laws that prohibit some of the practices that may be valid under the law for another. This has resulted in many illegal and environment-harming incidents, like the catching of illegal species by fishing boats in different countries and selling them in different markets, which in turn deteriorates the natural cycle in the oceans surrounding the indigenous land masses. This illicit catching of certain species not only harms the environment in terms of species depletion, but also affects the biodiversity of the oceans, affecting the food chain, particularly the predators like dolphins, seagulls, and penguins, amongst others. Although agriculture actively helps to save some species of fish from extinction, at the same time it massively consumes natural marine life. A radical solution to this was put forth by the Sewatak AB Technology Company, wherein a process was developed to grow microscopic fungi on industrial waste, thus solving two major problems of effective waste management and the problem of providing sustainable and high-quality fish food at lower cost, be it the financial or the environmental costs. This whole idea is undergoing a testing phase at a sulfate plant. Another radical solution to one of the major problems in agriculture, cost reduction is being tackled by Apollo Aquaculture Group, which is a Singaporean company as fish farms do not require a lot of money for capital expenditures, which include the construction of facilities, purchase of required equipment, and the first consignment of fishes. The major issues under financial load include the operating costs, the purchase of feed, the constant water purification of water, and the treatment of fish. This elimination of technical problems is very high, which is being attempted to tackle by the Apollo Agriculture Group by building what will be the world's first vertical eight-story fish farm. This attempt to create a vertical arrangement for sustainable fish farming is attributed to the lack of land on the island nation of Singapore. To increase the efficiency of the said vertical fish farms, the company introduced several innovations, with the first one being an aqueduct system, which is an automatic water renewal system based on the farming site. This system involves the usage of repeat filtering on the contaminated water and refilling the tanks as per requirement. This practice significantly reduces the costs of water replacement and the maintenance of workers. Another innovation includes an electronic inventory system, which allows real-time inventory and data sharing with all the stakeholders, purchasing staff, and sales managers. This system will help assess the water condition, 
the amount of feed present in it and the amount of it required with its accuracy being close to per cubic meter of water. This innovation helps to analyze and upgrade the initial requirements and produce more aquamarine animals in a shorter time frame while maintaining their quality as well. Microbubble Technology Pioneering by two visionaries, Dr. Fake Kamad and Dr. Poo Balan Ganeshan are promoting microbubble technology, which is believed to have the potential to transform fish farming by tenfolds compared to the currently implemented methods to produce and sustain fish farming, especially targeted at underdeveloped nations. Dr. Fake Kamad continues to work towards and recognize the ongoing issues in agriculture and its impact on the environment and worked in coordination with Dr. Poo Balan Ganeshan who is working at the University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur to find a solution to the most bothersome facade of agriculture. Through this collaboration, the two esteemed visionaries were able to build a new method that would address the issues encountered by shrimp farmers, particularly in Malaysia. This was done with the initial funding of 93,000 euros, which was sourced from the Newton Fund, which is a European funding program that builds research and innovation partnerships with countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America to support economic development, tackle global challenges, and develop talent and careers. Now let's look into the microbubble technology and why is it needed in the fish farming world. The visionary set out to investigate how to use of a microbubble aeration system could very much be a potential new direction for shrimp agriculture while lowering costs, increasing productivity, improving land usage efficiency, reducing energy requirements, and the impact of shrimp farming on the environment, and putting the industry on a more sustainable footing both in terms of benefit to the economy and the safety of the environment. New for the technical part, the system uses a generator to create small bubbles that release free radicals and further enhance the dissolved oxygen in the used water while simultaneously cleaning the water of waste and hazardous microorganisms and increasing the production of farmed finfish and shellfish. This aeration method employs naturally drawn air instead of a purely clean supply, which reduces the energy and maintenance-related expenses associated with compressed air generation. The generator produces tiny bubbles that have the property to emit free radicals with OH ions, which have an oxidation reduction potential, which is ORP of 1.6 volts. The resulting bubbles also boost the dissolved oxygen, which improves the seafood yields. This microbubble technology can very easily aid to boost the development rate of certain crustaceans like shrimps, along with other agriculture species, which include giant freshwater prawns, all while lowering the quantity of clean water, which is essential to run agriculture facilities. The cleansing property is supplemented by the method of detoxification and destruction of organic contaminants. The end goal of this method was to promote shrimp development while encouraging the circulation of beneficial bacteria or bioflax. All of this is done while running the same or lower energy needs. The technology provides a safer, chemical-free and low-energy alternative to the existing water purification methods, which will be accessible to developing countries in the upcoming months. The adoption barriers to this technology for countries across the world are low, and the operating costs are expected to be lower than the existing solutions. This technology will also help eradicate the currently employed methods of disinfecting water, which is majorly chemical-based and cause more harm to the environment in the long run. This technology's adaptability allows it to be implemented in a whole variety of crucial areas, where water is vital to industrial operations, which covers the fields of health, agriculture, and aquaculture. In recent reports, Dr. Kamad was part of a time-funded study that concentrated on the possibilities of microbubble technology in water disinfection with the generator already being tested for the presence of harmful bacteria like E. coli and also to detect the pollution levels in seawater. Dr. Kamad and Balan Ganseshan are looking forward to witnessing the effects of their new system while they attempt to improve industry practices through more effective and sustainable methods of farming and food production. They continue to work their way through this project to help build a system that will revolutionize the agriculture industry and reduce the health-related repercussions of the resulting wastewater produced post-operations, which will in turn reduce the environmental impact caused by the currently employed methods in agriculture. And that's all for today. What are your thoughts on lightning speed development? Comment your thoughts below. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel to be always updated about China's rising growth.